Hello everyone, I'm Stephanie Wong here with Warren Barkley, our Senior Director of Product Management for Vertex AI, and we are excited to share what's new with generative AI and talk about what it means for our customers. So let's dive in. First up, we recently announced Llama 3.1 models are now available on Vertex AI, and this includes a new 405B model, the largest openly available foundation model to date. 8B and 70B are also new versions that excel at understanding language, nuances, grasping context, and performing complex tasks such as translation and dialogue generation. Next, Google Cloud is the first hyperscaler to introduce Mistral AI's Codestral. Codestral is Mistral AI's first open weight generative AI model explicitly designed for code generation tasks. We also added Mistral Large 2, their flagship model, which offers their best performance and versatility to date. And Mistral Nemo. This 12B model delivers exceptional performance at a fraction of the cost. You can access the new models and more in just a few clicks using model as a service without any setup or infrastructure hassles. With Vertex AI, you can choose the foundation model that fits your requirements, access it simply via an API, and tailor it with robust development tools, all with the simplicity of a single bill and enterprise-grade security on our fully managed infrastructure. Hey, Warren, I'd love to hear your thoughts on these new models. So let's just dive straight into it. What is exciting for customers about these new models? It's really diversity, right? The diversity of choice. You've got this huge 405B model. You've got these smaller, very fast models. You've got uh, task-specific models like CodeStrel. Um, and so it's really exciting to see all these kind of diverse models all in the model garden um, for folks to use. Yeah, and there's a lot of excitement around open source these days. Why are customers choosing open models? In some cases, there are open models that are specific to some sort of task. So um, someone has trained it for something that they want to do. But people get very excited about having the ability to kind of fine tune a model or fully tune a model for something very specific they have. So taking you know large amounts of their data and really tuning that down to some sort of relatively narrow scenario often. Um, and it's also about control, you know, the ability to play, experiment and control and see what sort of uh, new goodness they can get out of that model. That being said, though, are you seeing customers choose between open and proprietary models or use a mix of both? And how does that impact their platform strategy? I see. I think what I've seen is so far is, is that most customers start with proprietary models and some of the smaller customers who have maybe less use cases generally kind of like once they're there, they're kind of there. And so they tend to start with those models and use those models. Um, but many of our bigger customers who have more sophisticated kind of use cases are using both. And in fact, if you look at our usage patterns, we see the same kind of um, nonlinear growth of usage of open models as we see of um, proprietary models. It's fascinating. And for those companies just starting out, how would you suggest companies to look at the marketplace of models and make decisions around them? Yeah, it's not an easy thing. I think that first of all, you kind of have to figure out what do you want to do? You know, are you doing some sort of prompt that's really complicated? Um, then you're going to need to go look at the bigger models. If you're looking for something that's relatively, um, you know, simple, like I just want to summarize a small, you maybe you want to go smaller models. Like, do you, does, does it matter how quickly the model responds? Like, these are all things that you kind of have to consider. And so it's not really a choice of between open and proprietary in that case. It's more like, what are the specific use case that you have in the scenario you have? And then you kind of narrow it down and then you can start playing. Now, one of the cool things in Vertex is you can compare models side by side right within the UI console. So you can give it a prompt and then compare multiple different models and see what sort of responses you get and see. And then that helps you narrow it down. What are your thoughts on micro models and how those complement other models? I think the, the interesting thing, there is a, definitely a trend and it's really around latency. So if you have something that you need very low latency to, much smaller models makes make a lot of sense. There's also a cost um, factor here, but we're seeing costs just generally go down across all models, whether they're big or small. Um, but certainly latency is the biggest thing. The, 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 the thing you have to really think about though is, is like, where do you trade that quality latency costs out? And so once you're getting into the smaller models, you really have to look at the evaluations very carefully to see if it's, if it's worth it to get that small and that fast. Yeah, latency and cost. Are there other things that customers need to consider when choosing an open model? 
Yeah, I think that you have to look at the license, for example. In some cases, licenses are not all equal. And so how can you use this model? What can you use this model for? And there are, in some open models, um, restrictions on that. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is, is understanding, um, you know, again, it's kind of a bit of a legal thing, is what is the output of the model? And is that is that covered in some in sort of legal way? And so, like, with proprietary kind of clo uh, closed models that we see today, most of them have some sort of a legal coverage for people, so they don't have to worry too much about it. And so there's some things like that that you have to kind of look at as you uh, get into it. Um, and it's a little bit more about legal than it is about technical in some respects. Mm -hmm. And we've heard this term models as a service. Tell us more about that and how does this help customers? Yeah, that's cool. It's really actually very cool. So if I want to just go and take a llama or I want to take Mistral or something, and I just want to use it, I don't need to do a whole bunch of stuff to it. I can just go in and a single click launch that model and start using it as an endpoint and start coding to it. And so models and search takes care of all the issues that you have around, okay, how do I host it? And, you know, how is the container working and what sort of compute do I need, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, those things are basically all taken care of for you. So you, it's managed for you as opposed to you having to do all the work of managing it yourself. Amazing. Well, that's all the time we have. So thank you so much, Warren, for hopping in today. Thanks a lot, Stephanie.